Fair enough. Yeah, because I like what he was saying on the sidelines, too. So tell him to keep talking that and I hope you see me soon. You feel me? And then we're going to have a good little, nice little bowl of gumbo together. All right, so that was back in week nine. But on Monday, Peters took to Twitter saying, it's a gumbo week, let's eat. I think it has <laughs> since been deleted. But CC, how does the Rams defense match up with the Saints offense this time around? I think they have the ability to, to match up better than what we might have thought going into the season. Because if you look at the way the Rams, Dallas, from taking over in the running game. And Dominican Sue, Aaron Donald, the rest of that interior, they made a conscious effort. They're not going to run the football on us. So I do believe when people make up their mind that, that something's not going to happen, and they have the talent to be able to do it. But it really boils down to the back end of this defense. What was the difference in the first meeting? The inability for the Rams to be able to get off the field in third down and the inability to negate big plays of the New Orleans Saints. So Marcus Peters, he concentrated on Twitter, you need to concentrate on coverages because one reason, there's several reasons why he is out of Kansas City. Number one is he's not dependable, all right, and that's meaning on and off the field, you don't know what he's going to say, and he will freelance and guess and drop coverages. We saw that last week's games. We saw that in the first meeting with the Saints. That's one of the things about him. He is a gambler. So how will Sean Payton, and it will be a head game, because Sean Payton will talk trash on the sidelines. So this will be a back and forth. If I'm Marcus Peter, I need to concentrate on what I'm doing, because Amari Cooper is not the same thing as Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas being more physical and Marcus Peters wanting to play physical, that's Michael Thomas's game. So be careful if, you're, if, if, if what you're trying to do doesn't play into the strong suit of what Michael Thomas and the Saints and Sean Payton are trying. They will definitely run a couple double moves against Marcus Peters and try to take advantage of his, of his aggressive. So there, because you're totally right that Peters is the ultimate boomer bust corner. That his first couple years in Kansas City, he led the NFL in takeaways. He burst on onto the scene as a rookie, but he also gave up some huge plays. This year he's had less of the boom and more of the bust, but still some big plays. But the other big difference in that football game is Marcus Peters was less healthy than he is now, and Keep Tlaib wasn't there. And so now you all of a McVay sudden- McVay actually said Keep Tlaib is the biggest difference between oh, then yes. and now. No, that was mm, the biggest difference. I, I, would, I would expect to Keep Tlaib to get most of the time on Michael Thomas. I know we'll talk about this later in the week, but to me, Aqib Tlaib is better with a physical receiver than Marcus Peters is. I think Aqib Tlaib, that might be a better matchup. Then you do worry about Teddy Ginn's speed Oof. and who's going to deal with that. So there's, 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 it's pick how you want to die sometimes against the Saints offense. There's no great answer. But I thought Coach Mangini, and it pains me to say this, made a really great point yesterday about the Rams defense, which is, is it possible that Indomitian Sue and others were easing their way through the regular season to get to this moment healthy, to get to this moment ready to go because they're veteran players on one-year deals knowing we are here to win a championship. If that's the case, that is bad news for everyone, including the Saints, because we know the talent that's on this Rams defense, and if they are able to duplicate what they did rush defense-wise, then those corners are going to have a much easier time in passing. So them. something we haven't talked about a lot is the fact that besides Sheldon Rankins, this is these are two very healthy teams that are mm -hmm. matching up, meeting up with everyone available. Is it rare that at this point in the season you, you get that? It's very rare. They're not going to make excuses for the injuries, but I think there's a couple things. Andres Pete interior offensive lineman. He's dealing with a broken hand, played every snap last week. And we know Teron Armstead, the left tackle, he's dealing with a partially torn pec. So you're talking about with the Rams playing ascending mm -hmm. defensively, totally different against the Cowboys. Man, if they can make that an advantage, man, against the Saints, no, you're talking about the, I would, if, if I knew that, then I would make the, the, the Rams a huge favorite because the dominant team in the trenches, man, has a huge advantage in these games. And you mentioned it. The Sheldon Rankins injury is a big one for New yes. Orleans. I know we weren't talking about the New Orleans defense, but when we do, that was a big right. loss they suffered in the divisional round. All right, we got to take a break. Coming up, will Tom Brady and the Patriots silence the doubters in Kansas City on Sunday? That is ahead on First Things First.